From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. Security risks are said to be widespread in the southern Afghan province of Kandahar. Yet, the number of women working in Kandahar has risen during the past year. The provincial government employs more than 1,150 women, most of them as teachers. That is up from about 900 female teachers last year. Kandahar is the former power base of the Taliban and its leader, Mullah Mohammed Omar. The Taliban ruled Kandahar from 1994 to 2002. During that period, women were banned from working outside the home. Most girls could not attend school. This year, 500 girls will complete high school. Mohammed Awaz Nazari is an education official in the province. He said Kandahar has about 47,000 female students, and the numbers are rising. He described an increasing demand for jobs among both educated and uneducated women. In addition to government jobs, women are working for private businesses. Mariam Durrani operates a local radio station. She says women in Kandahar need more job opportunities. But she adds they must strengthen the gains they have already made. A non-governmental group, the Afghan School Project, has given women scholarships that can lead to careers. The recipients attend programs at the Kandahar Institute of Modern Studies. The institute offers training in business management, information technology, English, and communications. Some Afghans have expressed concern that the Taliban could regain power after international forces leave Afghanistan. And they say the progress of women's rights could be lost if that happens. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. American educators plan to launch 50 new schools in Kenya. The new schools of Bridge International Academies are set to open in January, at the beginning of Kenya's school year. The goal of the private group is to educate children of families who make $2 a day or less. They opened their first school in Kenya in 2009. Since then, the number of schools has increased to 200. Bridge officials Shannon May, Jay Kimmelman, and Phil Fry say they want to educate 10 million children around the world. On the Bridge International Academy's website, the three friends say their effort began with a question. They asked why there were no plans to educate all the world's poorest children. They expect their early education business to make a profit, even though it is designed for very poor areas. Their low-cost plan uses new technology to help teachers and to follow student progress. It also tracks operations in each school. They call this new system Academy in a Box. 
every bridge teacher uses a Nook E reader. The electronic reader provides teachers with daily lessons. The school provides students with books that match the electronic lessons. The lessons have been developed by trained educators for all Bridge International Academy's classes. The lessons are designed to meet the requirements of Kenya's National Education Plan. Bridge's large class sizes and teaching methods are not usual in the schools of developed countries. They are not considered the best for learning. Yet supporters say the bridge operation compares well with public education in Kenya. The average cost to attend a bridge school is about $5 a month. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. A new experimental program using MOOCs or Massive Open Online Courses opened recently in Kigali, Rwanda. The Kepler Project is designed for people in the developing world. It uses MOOCs provided by foreign universities. It combines these online classes with help from local instructors and an internship program. A business foundation is helping to finance the first four years of the project. The students in the Kepler project pay no tuition. Fifty students are taking part in the first class in Rwanda. Canadian educational consultant Tony Bates praises the Kepler program for giving students a way to earn college credits. Students can earn academic credit through the Kepler Projects Agreement with Southern New Hampshire University in the United States. Mr. Bates also praises Kepler for providing local support and tutoring in Rwanda. But he says a lack of technology limits the usefulness of such a system in Africa. He says developing countries lack enough internet service outside major cities. Students may have mobile phones, but usually with very low bandwidth. Mr. Bates says it costs one American dollar to watch an eight-minute YouTube video on a low-cost handset. That is about the same as many Africans earn in a day. Tony Bates says streaming long video lectures would be too expensive for at least the next five to ten years. He says using materials designed for mobile devices may be better. He notes examples like math videos from the Khan Academy and courses from the Carnegie Mellon Open Learning Initiative. He says these materials are designed for distance learning and are more interactive. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. Public universities in Nigeria have reopened after a nearly six-month-long strike by teachers. Repeated strikes can add months, even years, to the time it takes a student 
to finish a study program. Students at public universities across Nigeria say they are worried about exams and completing their project work. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, a labor group, suspended the strike in December. Part of the settlement was a government promise to invest billions of dollars during the next five years in university buildings and equipment. The government said that soon 25% of the nation's budget will be spent on education. Some teachers say the strike was really about pushing the government to make Nigeria's universities better. Laz Emetike is with Delta State University. He says the strike was not only to improve conditions for university teachers, but was meant to help everyone. He says better science laboratories and other improvements will let Nigeria compete with other parts of the world. Countries throughout Africa, not just Nigeria, are considering how to answer the exploding demand for admission to universities. These countries must also improve academic values and requirements and find ways to pay teachers enough to keep them. Hundreds of thousands of students pass college entrance exams every year, but many cannot attend public universities because there are not enough classrooms for teachers. University lecturers say they will be watching to make sure their schools get and effectively use the money the Nigerian government has promised. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. Nigeria has one of the world's highest rates of people who cannot read or write. But a government agency is taking steps to educate more than 400,000 Nigerians in Kano State. The Kano State Agency for Mass Education has set high goals for literacy, the ability to read and write. Minister of State for Education, Nisam Wiki, reported on the situation last September. The minister said the number of illiterate Nigerian adults has increased by 10 million over the past 20 years. The current total is 35 million. To improve that situation, Kano's Education Agency has joined with Education for All, a project of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Working together, they have launched more than 8,000 adult literacy classes in 44 areas. Their hope is to raise adult literacy levels to 90% in Kano State by 2015. The agency says it now has 16,000 people to teach and train students. Another goal is to create jobs and improve living conditions. The Kano City Women's Center is one of many learning centers for young and adult women. It serves hundreds of students at its school 
and at a vocational or occupational center. At the center, women learn sewing skills and make products like soaps and air fresheners. 25-year-old Halima Aminu is a mother of three children. She started going to the Kano City Women's Center in 2010. Now she is in her final year at the senior secondary level. Halima Aminu hopes to continue her education at the next level and someday become a medical doctor. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. Community colleges in the United States have a lot to offer. Educators say these two-year colleges may be a good choice for international students who have finished secondary school and want to study in the U.S. Today we tell about a program for such students. It is called the Community College Initiative Program. It is designed for students from areas underserved in education and skills training. It lasts one school year. Since 2007, about 2,100 students from 20 nations have taken part in the program. The Bureau of Educational Affairs of the State Department provides for their needs. Three consortia, or organizations, of community colleges work with the Bureau of Educational Affairs to administer the program. Schools across the United States take part. Sider Rahman is project director of the Community College Consortium led by Northern Virginia Community College. He says many students in poor rural areas do not have an equal chance to succeed. At the start of their stay in America, students deepen their knowledge of English and learn about their school's surroundings. They can choose from among several fields of study, such as information technology, business administration, and agriculture. Other areas open to them include media and journalism and engineering. Students attend classes and study at participating community colleges. They can also join in internship programs with businesses or nonprofit organizations. You can get more details of the Community College Initiative Program from the Public Affairs section of the U.S. Embassy in your country. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carla Babb. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. Growing up can be hard in poor neighborhoods where crime is common. That is the situation Marco Antonio Aguilar faced when he started at Garfield High School in Los Angeles, California. The boy hated school. He says he had the wrong friends, often missed classes, and even got into fights. The school suspended him, barring him from attending classes. He almost was sent to a school for problem students. But Marco Antonio changed his behavior. 
He says a talk with his mother helped him change. And he praises his teachers for the help they provided. But now, students at Garfield High no longer receive suspensions. The punishment itself has been suspended. Jose Huerta, the Garfield High principal, took the action when he first arrived at Garfield more than four years ago. Back then, more than half the students were leaving school without finishing their studies. At the same time, Garfield was suspending nearly 700 students yearly. But Mr. Huerta had other ideas about how to deal with young people who misbehave. He said most of the suspensions were for behavior known as willful defiance. He said that could include something as minor as chewing gum in class. Under Mr. Huerta's leadership, students involved in willful defiance first talk to a teacher. Then a parent may get involved. Finally, group support can be provided. Today, Garfield graduates 85% of its students. And last year, the Los Angeles Unified School District changed its punishment policy. The whole district banned suspension to punish students for willful defiance. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. Sixty years ago, the highest court in the United States changed American education. On May 17, 1954, all nine judges of the Supreme Court ruled against racial separation in public schools. The court said such segregation in schools violates the United States Constitution. At that time, many school systems had separate schools for white students and black students. The segregation was the result of a court ruling from 1896. That decision permitted so-called separate but equal schools. Some schools had only white children. Others had only black children. Then about 60 years later, the case Brown versus the Board of Education came before the Supreme Court. It involved five separate legal actions, but it centered on an African-American child in Kansas. Linda Brown lived just a short distance from a school, but she was forced to travel across town to a black school because the school near her permitted only white students. Addison Francois teaches law at Howard University in Washington, D.C. He says the case ended official racial separation in U.S. schools. But he also criticizes the ruling. He says it should have set a time by which segregation had to end. Some segregated schools did not obey the Supreme Court ruling until the 1960s. Even today, many schools are still effectively segregated. In 2012, the Civil Rights Project at the University of California studied racial populations in schools. The study showed that many schools are less racially mixed than 40 years ago. The study says 
social and economic issues are partly to blame. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. The reported rape of a six-year-old student at a well-known school in Jakarta has received widespread media attention in Indonesia. The costly Jakarta International School, or JSI, serves many children of diplomats and wealthy foreign families. Indonesian police have arrested several suspects in connection with the incident reported in early April. Similar reports of sexual abuse at the school have followed. This week, another kindergarten student also said he was abused at the school. The Education Ministry ordered the kindergarten closed. The ministry said the school had been operating without permission. Tim Carr heads the Jakarta International School. He described the recent incident at the school as an unimaginable tragedy. He said the school is taking all measures to prevent another. Years ago, American investigators named a former JSI teacher as one of the worst child sex offenders ever identified. American William James Vahey worked at the school from 1992 until 2002. He killed himself last month after U.S. federal investigators seized some of his computer records. The evidence included 90 photographs of boys Vahey reportedly abused. The number of reported rapes is increasing in Indonesia, but the reports do not get a lot of public attention. Last year, the Indonesian Child Protection Commission declared child rape a national emergency. But it said it does not have dependable numbers on rape. A large part of Indonesian society considers it offensive to talk about sexual abuse. Victims are often afraid to report such crimes. They fear it will dishonor their families. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. Many people believe that teaching music to children makes them smarter and better able to learn new things. But the organizers of a new study say there is no scientific evidence that early musical training affects the intelligence of young people. An estimated 80% of American adults think music classes improve a child's ability to learn and do well in school. Researchers at Harvard University, however, have found that there is one thing musical training does not do. They say it does not make children more intelligent. Samuel Mayer is a graduate student in Harvard's School of Education. He says it is a mistake to think that learning to play a musical instrument improves a child's intellectual development. He says the proof comes from studies that measured the mental ability of two groups of four-year-olds and their parents. One group 
attended music class. The other went to a visual arts class. He says tests failed to provide evidence that those in music classes were any smarter. Samuel Mayer says only one study of many has seemed to show a small percentage increase in IQ, intelligence scores, among students. But he says musical training can be important for cultural reasons. In his words, we teach music because music is important for us. He notes that the works of writer William Shakespeare are not taught so that children will do better in physics. He says Shakespeare is taught because it is important. He does not think music needs to be any different than that. A report on the effects of music training in children was published in the journal PLOS One. For VOA Learning English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. From VOA Learning English, this is the Education Report. Thousands of young people in Senegal attend and live at religious schools called Daras. These schools accept only boys. The students are called Talibé and they study the Quran. Some Daras force students to ask strangers on the street for money and food. The government had promised to stop this forced begging by 2015. But the organization Human Rights Watch says there has been little progress. Recently, a government study found that more than 30,000 students were begging in Dakar, the capital. The boys were reported to be as young as four years old. They are often walking the streets shoeless and in torn old clothes. Matt Wells is a West African researcher for Human Rights Watch. He says the boys must bring back a required amount of money, sugar and rice or face punishment. He says teachers will often severely beat Talibé who fail to meet the demand. He also says the boys usually are hungry, live in dirty, overcrowded rooms, and receive very little real education. In March 2013, eight Talibé died in a fire in Dakar. Neighbors said they knew the children could not escape from the school building in which they were living. After the fire, Senegalese officials promised to take steps against child begging. But Human Rights Watch says the government has closed only one DARA for safety reasons. HRW says there are hundreds more that violate students' rights. Senegal's Ministry of Justice says it knows of the problems and is working on new legislation. But a ministry official notes there is cultural resistance to laws restricting religion. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal.